Alright, so Able to Live Light comes bundled with a ton of gear nowadays, be it MIDI controllers, keyboards, maybe even sound cards. So many producers actually own a Live Light license, but they never use it because they are turned off by that 8 track limitation. But it doesn't have to be that way because there's actually workarounds and in today's video I'm going to show you two ways that I have found to greatly increase my track count in Ableton Live Light. Let's get straight to it. Here's how we do it. Okay, so here we are in Ableton Live Light, and uh, as I was saying, the biggest limitation is that it only has eight tracks. And so, you know, just think about your drums, right? Usually you have drum kits with anywhere between eight, 12, 16 tracks. How are you gonna fit those alone into an eight track project? Well, one thing you could do is, uh, you could, let me get rid of these tracks. Um, you could choose your drum library. I'm going to use the 707 core kit here. Drag it onto our MIDI track and just click on this arrow here. Boom. Now we are presented with 16 channels and each of these is like its own individual track, right? So as you can see, each one has its own volume fader here. You can pan it. It has mute and solo functions and if I double click on it I can drag whatever effects I want onto it for processing. So we are on the rim channel right now I can just drag my channel EQ here and EQ it a certain way. Maybe I want to compress it a little bit so I can drag a compressor there, apply some random settings, I don't care. But then when I want to process the kick in a different way which you know probably is the case Let's just go to the bass drum channel, and again, it's empty, I can just drag a compressor in there. Q, and these will have different settings. Not only that, um, down here we even have some send return kind of tracks. And by default we have a mix bus and a reverb channel, but if I just go back to my kit here and open the chain list view, Boom, I can just create up to six in total. Yeah, six send return channels in total. So we already have two. Why not add um, a delay? You know, you just get your delay, you drag it here, and boom, let's check. There we have it. So every single one of these channels can send a copy to our delay for further processing. It's a send returns kind of configuration. So, you know, six of those you can have in total, plus all your drum sounds, which in this case are 16. 16 plus six is 22. So already within that one single drum track, we actually have 22 tracks. But it doesn't stop there because as you can see here, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, Six. Oh, okay, there's more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. Well, more than six, I cannot tell how many they are. Um, different grids, and we've only populated one of those with our 16 drum sounds. We could select a different grid like this one, drag an instance of Simpler onto one of those pads, or each of those 16 pads, and we could even load our own separate samples in there. So you could, you know, fill out this grid with 16 instances of sampler or simpler using your own drum sounds, you know, which you purchase separately. Or you could even use some different sounds, piano, uh, some synth samples, why not? The sky is the limit here. So potentially, Let's say there's eight of these grids. I can, for the life of me, see how many of those there are, but it's certainly more than six. Let's say there's eight grids here. Eight times 16 is 128 different sounds you have here. And again, each of those, if we have a look at the simpler I just dragged here, it's going to be reflected up here. There you go. There's my instance of simpler. So imagine having 128 of these tracks each with separate fader, panning, mute, solo, effect chain. And each of these can be sent to, again, up to six separate uh, send return kind of buses. 
or reverbs, delays, what have you. So, you know, already just with this one simple trick, we have up to 128 plus 6 equals 134 tracks. And we've only used up one of our eight available tracks. How great is that, right? So yeah, that's the first little trick. Not really a trick, but maybe many people aren't aware of this and they hear like, oh, we only have eight tracks. What am I gonna do with eight tracks? Well, you know, you don't really have eight tracks. Every single one of those eight tracks can hold up to 134 tracks on its own. And I mean, that alone would be a hell of a project and that brings me to the second little hack I'm about to share with you today, which is, uh, uh, you know, on those big, again, 30, 50, 70 plus track projects, you usually never have all of those 70 tracks playing at the same time, right? What I mean is, for instance, you might have, say, an electric piano sound on the verse, but not on the chorus. Maybe on the chorus you have a natural grand piano sound which isn't there on the verse so you have two tracks for those but they never overlap they never play at the same time and that being the case if that is the case why would you waste two tracks when you could just use one track and here's what i mean so i'm gonna create a new midi track here and um, instead of loading an e piano sound there and then creating a separate track with my grand piano sound, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna go for the instrument rack, drag it there, expand the view here, and now I'm gonna look for the sounds I wanna have. Let's go to the piano and keys section, get the basic E piano, there it is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for, there it is, grand piano, drag it there as well. So now we have two sounds on the same track, playing at the same time. If I play some notes on my computer keyboard, because I'm too lazy to go get the controller. So, there you go. Those notes we're triggering both the E piano and the grand piano sound as well. So we need to separate those. And how do we do that? Well, um, we have a couple options here. We're gonna go for the chain pane here. We're gonna drag this all the way up and then we're gonna right click and distribute ranges equally. Boom. So that gives us two sets of values. And Whenever the value of the chain selector is in between 0 and 62, only the E piano is going to be triggered. Whereas, whenever that value is here in this interval between 63 and 126, then the grand piano is going to be triggered. And to give you an example, the default value being 0, if I now press some keys on my computer keyboard, you only hear the E piano. So let me add a clip in here. And this works for the arrange view as well, uh, the process I'm about to show you. And for this clip, let's go to the automation pane here, select our instrument rack and the chain selector. And as you can see, by default, it's down there at zero. And zero falls within that zero to 62 range where the piano, um, sorry, the electric piano is going to be triggered. So we could record, say, our verse part here using the E piano sound. But then, moving on to the chorus, for instance, let's create a separate clip for that. We don't want the E piano trigger here. That piano has no business playing in the chorus. We want the grand piano. So we go back to the automation pane for that clip and the instrument and chain selector and we move this up to anywhere in that second interval so for instance 120 why not now 120 falls into this interval and so it's going to trigger the grand piano so if we launch the second clip well it's an empty clip right now so let me actually play some notes on my keyboard here and as you can see it only triggered the grand piano sound and not the e piano sound and so, you see where this is going. Um, 
Whenever you have some instruments, some sounds in your mix that don't happen at the same time, you don't need to waste separate tracks for them. You can just create an instrument track. And I have just opened it up here. And as you can see, this looks very similar to the drum track, right? Because um, the E piano has its own volume fader, and so does the grand piano. They all have their own panning controls, mute, solo, and if I double click here, I can, of course, add my custom audio effects. So maybe a delay on the grand piano, sorry, on the E piano, and on the grand piano we might want to have, I don't know, a phaser effect. You know, doesn't matter what you do, the important thing is you can mix these as if they were two separate tracks. And you have just used up one of your eight available tracks in Ableton Live. And, you know, you don't have to limit this to two. Let's say uh, that there was a breakdown uh, where neither the E piano nor the grand piano were playing, but instead we had, oh, I don't know, a clavy part. Why not? Let's drag that into there as well, move it all the way up, and let's again right click and distribute ranges equally. So now we have three intervals. The first one, 0 to 41, is going to be our E piano, so we don't need to edit our first clip. The second one for the grand piano is now limited to 42.83, so we're going to need to change uh, the chain selector value for that clip move it down within that range there we go that was harder than i thought <laughs> and then maybe on our third clip here we want our clavy sound to be triggered so we're gonna move this all the way up to 113 113 of course being within the third range which is the one triggering the clavy chord so if i move on to the third clip and I play some notes. We have our clavy sound. And you know, the sky's the limit. You can have as many of these as you want. Just remember, they don't ever have to play at the same time. If you want some sounds to play at the same time, you're gonna need some separate tracks for those. And so that is it, my friends. You know, um, I have uh, a 16 plus did we have here 17 plus 3 is 20 plus 3 is 23 i have a 23 track project plus our two main master send return tracks here which means 25 plus the master track 26 i have a 26 track project within ableton live light where i'm only supposed to have eight tracks pretty cool right so you might have noticed i've been working with just midi tracks that's because i make electronic music i only use samples and synths but you might wonder does this trick sort of trick work as well if i have more of a recording kind of situation where i'm recording i don't know vocals um maybe guitars basses violins whatever there is a way to do that as well actually and you know um I'm not going to cover it today, but you know, if you would like for me to make a similar video for that kind of situation, just let me know in the comments, you know, it's, um, it's relatively easy, especially if you've understood the principles of this video, it's gonna, it's gonna be pretty easy to do that as well. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video and found it helpful. If so, let me know in the comments. And also, if there's anything more you would like to know about Ableton Live Lite, just let me know. Also, I have a playlist with all of my tutorials on Ableton Live Live. There's some sound design in there as well, so you might want to check it out. That being said, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. Take care.